the ayah before this one, Allah Azza wa Jal emphasized the importance of being fair. You know, wa awful kaila ida kiltum was you bil kistasil mustaqim valika khairun wa ahsanu ta'wila. Whenever you weigh things and scale things, make sure you're fair, basically, is what Allah is saying in that ayah. Be fair in your dealings. And you know, back in the day, people were selling groceries, rice, potatoes, whatever. Make sure that the scales are even, so you give the exact weight that you're supposed to sell to your customer. Be fair. Be fair in business. And the next ayah was about what? Listening, perception, emotions. They'll be asked about, don't follow things you don't know about. Why? Because there's not just unfairness in business and in money. There's also unfairness in how we think about people, how we perceive people, how we have emotions towards people. We can be unfair in that too. It's an extension of that. And the, the, the last of these three ayat, which really blows my mind, is what I want to leave you with. وَلَا تَمْشِي فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَحَا Don't walk on the earth with arrogance. What does arrogance have to do with any of this? When you become okay with being unfair, and you're not careful about fairness, because you assume you're fair anyway. When you're not careful about what you hear, and how that affects your perception, and how that affects your emotions, it's easy for you to pass judgment on people or say things to people or perceive people a certain way. When that becomes easy for you, then there is no greater sign of arrogance than that. Don't walk on the earth with pride is not an isolated statement here. It's actually a, 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 a conclusion to what's come before it. When unfairness becomes common practice, when not, not sensitive listening, not careful listening, not control over our emotions becomes common practice, then yeah, people are going to walk around on the earth like they own the place. Like they're in a position to judge everyone. Like they're in a position to pass opinions about everyone. And what's crazy about it is, when they hear something about someone, or when, even within your family, oh, this one's always like that. I already know. You already know? You don't, know, you don't even live in the same country. How do you know? But so easy to pass sweeping opinions and make judgments. And then share them with other, the others. The last final thing, 30 seconds it'll take. When Allah said, وَلَا تَقْفُوا مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِلْمٍ Don't follow. Qafa in Arabic is the back of the neck. عَيْنَاهُ فِي قَفَاهُ They say about a soldier who's running from the battlefield, constantly looking back, did anybody come and get me? Is the back of the neck. Okay? The idea of qafa is to follow something. Like when you're following someone and all you see is the back of their head, you don't really see who they are, is it? So the word is actually in a sense describing a kind of blind following. Allah is not just criticizing you and me for what we say or think or perceive. He's also criticizing us for following people when we don't investigate properly. When they say things without verifying and we just take their word for it and go with it. When we become easy consumers for, for you know, weak information. When we become that within our families, within our friends, within our circles. Right? When we when we develop that habit, Allah will describe elsewhere, There are people who say the wrong thing, say ignorant things, and there are others who listen to them. And Allah says, Allah knows all of the wrongdoers, meaning the, the, the one talking and the one listening are both doing wrong. You're both doing wrong. Identify that in yourself. Sometimes, uh, you know, your parents might say some crazy things. Parents sometimes say crazy things. You know, those people are doing this, this, this. How do you know? Well, I just have a feeling. That's not the time to give your mother a Nomar Ali Khan video, watch this because you need this lecture. No, no, no. That's the time to just end the conversation. Ignore the conversation. Talk about what's being cooked for dinner instead. Change it. When our loved ones say things like that, we don't indulge in that conversation. We just change the subject. Ignore it. Don't let them fall further into sin. This is a sunnah of our mother Aisha radiallahu anha. You know there were rumors made about her. And when she spoke to her mother, her mother said, you know who must have done it? And she named some people, which was also a rumor. And so what did Aisha radiallahu anha do? She just changed the subject. She just changed it altogether. So she said, subhanAllah, and she changed the topic. So yes, within our families, when that happens, no need to argue. No need to give them a lecture. You have to become crafty and learn to just change the subject so they don't indulge further into that mistake. Nobody does these kinds of mistakes on purpose. We get emotional and we do them. May Allah Azza wa make us more careful about what we listen to and how we think about it. May Allah Azza wa correct our perception and the emotions that follow as a result. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Hakim wa nafa'ani wa iyaakum bil ayati wa dhikr al-Hakim.